So we have a view controller. View controller. And the API service protocol. The view controller should only reference the API service. And then you can have multiple implementations of that, like the contentful one, contentful API service that implements the protocol. And the benefit of that, the view controller doesn't create its own dependencies, is that you can leverage polymorphism and inject different yeah. ones. For example, maybe you have a Firebase API service that will load from Firebase, and you can do it without changing the view controller. Or maybe you have a test. And also one. using the SDK. Yes, you could have one using the SDK okay, without exactly. changing the view controller. So you could have a content full SDK service that uses the SDK they wanted you to use. But they didn't request you to use the SDK, right? But they expected it. <laughs> yeah, they expected it. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, you can also, when you're testing, you can use a um, API service stub, for example, a test double, a spy, or you know, a mock. Any test double also implements this. So you can have multiple implementations of this protocol, and the view controller shouldn't know about the concrete implementations. Yeah. Because then you can replace them when testing or when using a different SDK or a different framework. Yeah, and just to be clear here, these services, the implementations, uh, they don't have to be uh, API specific, you know, like they don't have to hit the network. You could have like a local one, right? Which then uh, it begs the question, should the protocol be named, you know, as API like have this notion of the API, which denotes like a, in this case, at least a remote location, right? Yes. Maybe it could be just service, right? Uh, what, what is this service loading? Recipes. Mm -hmm. We could call it the protocol shouldn't leak implementation details like an API. Maybe you should just call it recipes service or recipe but service. That's it. So it just gets recipes, right? Where, where the recipes are coming from, for the point of view of the view controller, doesn't matter. Makes sense. The recipe service can get recipes, regardless where it comes from. Maybe it's from an in-memory uh, implementation. Maybe it's from a database. Maybe it's from an API. Yeah. And the implementation has a concrete name. This is the contentful API service because it's talking to the contentful API. You can even call it contentful uh, recipe API service, recipe service. Mm -hmm. service. There it is. But for this to be possible, to decouple the view controller from concrete implementations, we need to use dependency injection. The view controller shouldn't create the dependency. So let's have a look at the view controller. Recipe view controller. So who creates the recipe view controller? Uh, from the app delegation. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. The controller, app delegate, sync delegate, yes. Sync delegate. Yes. Okay, so here we can inject. Let's extract this to a constant. Let's call it VC. At view controller equals recipe view controller. Let me move this out of the way, make some more space. All right. So here we need to inject now dependency into the view controller, either via constructor injection or property injection. Usually if you're loading from a storyboard, you use property injection because if you don't support, if you support old iOS versions, you cannot use yeah. initialized injection. But, and then you just 
make this a internal Set. property and you can inject the service. Instead of creating the service in the view controller, whoever creates the view controller needs to pass a service to it. Now the view controller doesn't know about concrete implementation. There was a dependency here. The view controller was depending on the concrete implementation. But now it's gone. Make sense? Yes. All right. And it's up to whoever creates the view controller to give it the dependencies. So this is property injection. We are injecting a property into the controller. Another way would be constructor injection. We can pass a service here. So let's create a service in another constant. Service, service. Now we need an initializer. Yeah. Let's see. Need with collection view layout. into my Xcode, <laughs> so how to complete it. <laughs> Let's make it a convenience initializer here, so we don't need to implement all the required initializers. So we pass a service, which is a recipe service. It's a service. Right. Here we can call self dot init with the collection view layout. Collection view layout. Auto complete is broken. Mm -hmm. And self dot web service equals service. Now we can be private again. Yeah, because we are injecting in the initializer. So you have these two options depending on what you're trying to achieve. We build. And again, the it doesn't have to be called web service anymore. It's, it can be service or recipe service, something like that. Yeah. Also, I think uh, they should be changed to let. To make sure no one in the running time changes. So we can call it a recipe service. But since you're already in the context of a recipe view controller, maybe just calling a service is enough. Yeah, exactly. Because it's the service for the recipe view controller, which provides recipes. Yeah. The context is very clear here. We don't need to give long names to properties. And you also say we can make this a let shouldn't be optional. But now we have a problem because this is a convenience initializer. Yeah. If you want to make this a let and not optional, you need to actually make this a initializer. And you need to then you need to implement the required init with coder. Yeah. I'm not uh, using storyboard, I said, I think it will be normal. Yeah, so then it's fine then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. So now we have a constant that is not optional, which is already a better design here. Let's have a look. So we don't need optional chaining anymore. You always have a service. Now, you don't care which concrete implementation of that service you're talking to, you just care that you have a service that will get recipes. Now, where are you getting from? The provenance of the data doesn't matter. This is dependency injection. Injecting dependencies, then you decouple the classes from concrete implementations, which will facilitate testing, which is something that they also mentioned that you should have added some more tests. Yeah. So now you can actually test the, the, the view controller, right? Because you can pass uh, a test double for the service and you can simulate the events, you know, when the view loads, for example, okay, you want to make sure that the service fetches the recipes, you know, this sort of thing. And then what happens in the view, like when the uh, service fetches the recipes, you know, the table view gets populated, how many cells you have, this sort of thing, right? So this is what enables you now to do that. 